So Christine is a film from 1983 and it's directed by such a legendary director as John Carpenter, one of the all-time masters of horror films. This film is streaming right now on Netflix, at least uh, Netflix Canada, which I just finished watching it on, and I believe Netflix US and pretty much all Netflix will probably be the same if it's streaming on, uh, on this service. Um, it's been streaming for about two months that I've noticed, so um, I believe it's there. <laughs> if it's not, sue me. But uh, this is my second time uh, viewing this film, and the first time I watched it was when I was a teenager. I think I was probably like 13 years old or so, and I had not re-experienced Christine um, since then. So this is the first time that I've re-watched it since uh, being much younger, and I loved it even more. Like, way more. It's just a way different experience when you, um, when you view something for a second time, years and years after the first time you viewed it. It's just, you acknowledge everything in such a different perspective, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. I love revisiting films like that. But uh, basically, the story of Christine, it's a Stephen King film, so it was a book, and I did not read the book. So I have no, um, you know, say on the book or the comparisons or anything like that. But uh, I know that it, it was originally a book, obviously, by Stephen King, and then it was adapted by John Carpenter, who John Carpenter can do no wrong. Well, I can't say that because his modern shit is not that great, but... Uh, he can do no wrong prior to, I don't know, 2005, 2000, I don't know. I mean, I even like his, his you know, I like Ghosts of Mars, I like uh, Escape from L.A., I like those films. So, um, anyways, back to Christine. <laughs> you get this uh, possessed car story, but, uh, you know, where this kid, he, he's a young guy, he's a nerdy guy, um, one of his best friend, or basically his best friend, is uh, a jock in school, and he like plays on all the sports teams, and they're kind of a mismatch. You wouldn't really see them hanging out together, but they're best friends. And um, Dennis, which is the the jock the sports player, is be uh, like really knows uh, the main character's parents. The main character being a nerdy guy named Arnie, Arnie Cunningham, which everybody calls him Cuntingham, the bullies and shit. And uh, these guys are best friends, Dennis and Arnie, and um, it's, it's, he, Arnie ends up buying a car and the car is possessed, like it ends up being completely possessed because of some lore that came back uh, or is explained throughout the film. I'm not really going to get into it because of spoilers, but there's a reason why the car is possessed and it is actually legitimately possessed to the point where it controls itself and it starts controlling the mind of Arnie as well. Arnie, the main character. And, um, and the story, you know, just gets more escalated and more escalated from there. Uh, this film has a lot more to offer than just your possessed car film though. Um, Arnie's parents, honestly, in my opinion, right from the get-go are not doing Arnie any service whatsoever because they're so overprotective. They basically control his life and run every decision for him to the point where it makes him so vulnerable, so insecure, such um, like a uh, timid kind of having no self-respect, self-worth, feeling kind of young man and I think that this honestly happens a lot and the story just goes much deeper than like with his psychology because obviously he's going crazy and the story is about him going crazy but all he wants to do is be accepted and be the cool guy and once he discovers this car, which is basically his opportunity to be the cool guy, everybody starts pouncing on him and telling him that it's wrong and he takes it 
to such a far extreme of, um, of fighting back and, and rebelling um, to the point where the, the rebellion is not even rebellion anymore. It's just sick, twisted evil, basically. And that's where his psyche goes. But um, th what it plays on, it plays on a lot of realistic um, situations, I guess. And I think this film, especially if you look into it, I got it right away, but especially if you like dig deep into it, it has a lot more to say than, than your typical horror films. Um, it has a lot more to say to it. And there's a lot, a lot beneath the surface that um, I don't know if everybody picks up on um, or if it's like, I don't know, because like I said, I got it right away and I could read what was between the lines right away. But, um, like, you see even the relationship between uh, Dennis and um, Arnie. <laughs> Dennis and Arnie. Um, Arnie being, like, the nerdy kid, and he's, he's so picked on, and he's so stomped on on a daily basis that he just, as soon as he discovers this car, it's his ticket to, like, this this crazy confident um you know egotistical dude that it goes from one extreme to the next where you got Dennis where he's the jock but he's kind of like in that middle center and i think how i said the the parents of Arnie kind of aren't do or haven't done excuse me haven't done him a service because um because of the way they have been raising him. They've been raising him like a baby, basically. Like, you know, kind of suppressing him t so much to the point where he experiences the real world and then just goes crazy and batshit bananas with the help of, you know, the batshit bananas car. But I think um, the commentary um, with Stephen King's story is kind of touching on that where um, you can suppress somebody f so much until they explode where um, you know you have the good intentions of the parents doing that but at the same time maybe giving your children a little bit of leeway with experiencing the world for themselves kind of gives them the taste of uh, growing up by themselves and learning by themselves and experiencing things for themselves so they don't um, hold such um, what's the word for it like hostility or um, negative emotions over over it kind of thing maybe I'm thinking way too deep into Christine but <laughs> maybe Christine is just an evil car movie which I mean it is but I mean, I really liked it. You got some legendary actors in here too. You've got Roberts Blossom, who um, was really, uh, really famous for uh, portraying the uh, old man Marley character in Home Alone. So I recognized him right away. He plays a totally different character in this film, though. And then you got uh, one of my favorite actors that I've discovered kind of recently, and it was nice to see him in this film too. He kills it. Um, Harry Dean Stanton, he plays the detective kind of cop guy who's investigating into Arnie and what happens with Arnie uh, when he starts to, you know, cause some shit. <laughs> but Harry Dean Stanton, Roberts Blossom, two legendary actors who are both deceased uh, uh, right now, rest in peace to both and um, have shown up in so many films. Um, I will mention before I go... Um, the scene, there is a scene, and this is not going to be spoilers or anything, but there is a scene where a car is going, or Christine, I should say, I'm sorry. Christine, the car, is going into an alley, and the alley is just just too narrow for, the, for Christine. So Christine is going in there because Christine is invincible, uh, as everybody knows who's seen the film. And it's going in there, and it's about to crush one of the bullies who's just standing there about to be crushed by Christine going into the alley. The fucker could just jump on top of the car and like run 
over the car. I mean, the car is, it's a pretty like low end car. The guy could just go whoop and then just go because Christine is like edging into the alley, right? It's not like Christine is just right in there. It's like edging there, all the scrapes, like it's the walls are scraping the car. Buddy's just like, ah, 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 ah. Like the guy could just be like, and done. And just walk over the car. But uh, again, nitpicking as I always do. Anyways, I'm going to end that Netflix banter as it is. Classic film by John Carpenter. Um, I, I This is a viable film. I'm going to start... Um, saying my Netflix banters films, whether they're viable or not viable, this is viable. Um, it's out on 4K already, and it's streaming on Netflix if you want to check it out. If you've never checked it out before, definitely check out Christine. It's a classic. Um, as much as the car is a classic, the film is a classic, and uh, it's definitely viable. So I will be purchasing it as soon as I can um, on 4K with a slipcover because I love my slipcovers. And that's all I have to say about Christine. If you haven't seen Christine yet, go watch Christine. It's on Netflix. Netflix banter, baby. Cheers.